A city of two million, almost emptied in less than a day. It's normally busy streets quiet. 17th of April 1975 marked the start of a reign of terror for many Cambodians. That morning, Khmer Rouge soldiers marched into the city as victors. The people of Phnom Penh welcomed them, happy that a five-year civil war was finally over. But hours later, they were all ordered to leave for the countryside. Chumme was living in Phnom Penh at the time. We were told the Americans were planning to bomb the city, but the soldiers told us we could return in a few days. Anyone who refused to leave was shot. He remembers being forced to march for nearly a week with his family. His three-year-old son didn't survive the journey. Like many others, he died from disease and starvation. The Khmer Rouge was trying to create a rural utopia. Its four-year campaign of brutality would end up killing around two million people intellectuals, teachers, and just about anyone accused of being a spy. But few could have guessed that in the early days of the regime's rule. Roland Neveu is a French photographer who was in Phnom Penh the day it fell. He says he never imagined the evacuation would one day be the subject of a war crimes trial. It was the end of a series of events. All right, that's it. It's the end of the war. To me, it was not more, no more than that. He and other foreigners were told to move to the French embassy. Some Cambodians tried to join them, but most were turned away. This is the gate that made the difference between life and death in 1975. It's been moved to the embassy's gardens and preserved as a part of history. Foreigners were allowed to leave after several weeks, but many Cambodians had to stay behind, abandoned to their fate. Nearby is an inscription that reads, this gate opened then closed on an unspeakable suffering and the deaths of millions of Cambodians. It's a reminder of the country's violent past, a brutal past that Khmer Rouge survivors like Chum Mei hope will not go unpunished.